Hi guys, welcome back to We Should Talk, a pop culture interview series from In The Know. I'm your host, Gibson Johns, and today on the podcast, we have Leva and Naomi from Southern Charm. They were coming to me live from JBL Fest in Las Vegas, so they were together, they were just hanging out, and um, they were doing a media interview for, for this event, and um, they really got into it. We kind of touched upon a lot of different topics when it came to the season of Southern Charm, and I know that this season was kind of divisive. I think a lot of people didn't like it. I think some people thought it was really disjointed. Um, I tended to enjoy it. I definitely saw that there were disjointed moments and there was kind of a bloated cast and not everyone gelled together and didn't really feel like one big friend group like it has in the past with this group. But um, there were moments of promise for sure. And I just, I think that there's, there's potential in figuring it out because there's definitely a lot of really good dynamics in this group and um we really got into it in this interview and they spilled some tea some breaking the fourth wall it sounds like this upcoming reunion is super juicy and intense and again i hope we see that um it sounds like a lot of stuff kind of happens off camera with this group and i think um with some rejiggering of the cast that could change and we could actually see some of that um no but naomi and leva were great and they really shared what they thought about a lot of the Craig stuff, a lot of this season, um, what happens in the finale. Um, they added some really awesome context that we're not getting on the show, and um, I, they were, I'm really grateful that they shared it. Uh, so keep listening or keep watching for my interview with Leva and Naomi from Southern Charm. Tune in to Southern Charm on Bravo on Thursdays, and please rate, review, and subscribe to We Should Talk on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. All right, so we are here with Naomi and Leva from Southern Charm, who are currently at JBL Fest, having much more fun than I am. How are you guys? Good. Good. So what what's happening at JBL Fest? Like, tell me, tell me. I know there's some performers. Like, I know it. T- what's going on over there? So tonight we're really excited. Yeah. Um, tonight we're going to see. Um, BB Rexa. Is it BB Rexa? BB, yeah. yeah. And I think there's one other concert going on before. There's, it's like very well put together. There's probably, we're going to see two people tonight. Yeah. And I was excited to see Doja Cat. I feel like that was yeah. on, right? Jealous. Yes. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's basically like, so I came in and I was like, okay, what is this, this, like festival exactly mm-hmm. i'm trying to like pick it all up and it looks when you look outside the window it's like you're at a straight up festival i feel i feel like i'm 20 years younger right now i'm feeling <laughs> my i'm with my best life you look 20 years younger. I'm looking funky. and then you're we're you're, you're looking great but are, so are you, are you guys are you guys generally like festival girlies like are we like into the festival life or is that or is this I kind of festival okay. like child i think she's a little bit more like a little bit, not really though. Yeah. We're both kind of grainy. Yeah, kind of we're a little bit, but you know, when we can sneak into a VIP and enjoy the show, <laughs> our bougie asses are right there. No, we're so happy to be here though. That I think this is, like I said, really well executed. So we're yeah. really excited. Yeah, yeah. The event, beautiful. And- Everyone's super organized, and I love JBL speakers because I live by them. Because I throw them around, nothing happens. Mm-hmm. I flip. <laughs> I actually fight over my flip. Me and my husband fight over it. I'm like, I need to just buy another flip because this is uh, this is getting crazy. And also, and also, everyone has to have one because it's one of those things where it's like you get together with your friends and you're like, okay, who brought the speaker? And like somebody, somebody always forgets. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the party is whack if the speaker's not good. Mm-hmm. Let's keep it real. Yeah. Next I'm question. Long, yeah. It's. <laughs> I actually am like at a country club and they don't play music and everyone at the club waits for me to bring my JBL <laughs> and I play it super loud like when the, the not like you know <laughs> through there and then the kids are like yeah <laughs> and you know I'm waiting for one of them to chuck it in the pool but anyway. I love it I love it and I feel like this this getaway for you guys and this kind of like it's happening at a good time you're you're in the come down from this from this season, I mean, it, it's never easy to be in season and have it be airing on TV. Do you feel like this is coming at the right time for you to like kind of blow off some steam? Totally. totally. Oh my gosh. I mean, I, first off, we survived. Yeah. <laughs> Barely. High yes. Five. Towards the end, it was hairy for sure. But um, I think we still had fun. Yeah. And yeah, this is like it was the a best. net positive, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I feel like the two of us were like Thelma and Louise. Like every time we're like, should we just get in the car and get out of here? <laughs> who's screaming today <laughs> and we just finished filming reunion right so yeah. that was a lot 
a lot, a lot, a lot. So yeah, we're happy to be here. How would you characterize the reunion since you brought it up? Oh my gosh, it was so surprising. Like yeah. there was a few things that had my jaw on the floor that I didn't know. And it's like actually about like a person I'm close to. So there was just like, I think a lot <laughs> happened very quickly. And even throughout the reunion, I feel like things changed between people. Um, it was really raw too. Like it was like almost crying. too raw. Like it was very, very intimate and things were discussed that, you know, there's always somewhat of an understanding of, yes, you know, you put your life out there for TV mm -hmm. and you talk about things, but there's always sort of a barrier of like things you don't talk about. Mm -hmm. And that barrier was definitely broken um, on several levels, mm -hmm. except different times. Yeah. And it was really surprising. So yeah. um, hopefully and in several different ways and scenarios, yeah. it's like, I guess in our industry, they call it like fourth wall, but it's like, there's that stuff. And I mean, they're real, like there's real friendship. So not everything happens when a camera's rolling, like things happen when they're not rolling. And then, you know, unfortunately, because, you know, we can't always keep it together, like producers have to catch up. So I think also reunion, you'll get a lot of context too yeah. about a lot of things that I think viewers were like, wait, this seems like severe. Or, this, doesn't seems, make sense. this doesn't make sense. Or like, why was that reaction so intense? You know? Yeah. Right. And do you, and do you attribute, do you generally attribute when, when, when viewers are reacting that way? Cause I did notice that for, for this season as well. Like, do you attribute that to how things are edited or just things that aren't brought up on camera? Like what sort of, how do you think about that as people that are very much in it? So they have, I mean, editors have a really hard job because mm -hmm. it's hundreds of hours of footage from multiple different cameras, multiple production teams that then have to be like put together to make sense. And, and that's they, like weekly, right? Yeah. So, yeah. um, cause we're filming like four days, five days sometimes. And so that's hundreds of hours each week put together into like one episode for you guys. This year we had new casts. So, you know, of course they, it's important for the viewer to get to know them. You know, sometimes there's areas where I think they wanted more from some of us, but it was like, well, you guys have to get to know the new cast. And, and then again, it's, it's like a catch 22. You want real friendships, but real friendships have fights off camera. And then right. you have the cat more camera friendships that like save their arguments for that. <laughs> you have to be a really seasoned person to be able to like hold it together. <laughs> That's not me. <laughs> you know, she's gotten like 3 a.m. text, like just love a like. You know, so like, do you, do you love it? Like, do you wish that you were more like that? Like for the show or are you, are you me? happy being the person that's not bringing it up on camera all the time? No, I wish I actually, I, I admire Naomi because she has like, I literally read self-help books about being like a stoic, like being like practicing stoicism because I'm hmm. so terrible at it. And she is able to, um, hold it together she always has like decorum and she's always able to choose her battles and for me it's like I'm a pit bull I'm just like trigger <laughs> you know and she's like lava <laughs> she's like running behind me it's like the trick the like I'm just off leash like there's I saw a I'm squirrel like, I'm off leash yeah this is no way this is right. <laughs> don't do it. and I'm just like the pit bull that saw the squirrel like you're they're not getting me back till I get that squirrel so <laughs> That's <laughs> our like I mean, dynamic. And she's just like sitting on the curb, like waiting for it to finish and then like helping me <laughs> wipe my tears and also being like, oh, that's not worth it. I'm like, but it's, yeah, you, know, right. you know. Yeah, so. but I think you bring up an interesting point though, that it's like this what I mean, I really enjoyed the season, but it definitely felt like there was some transitional elements to it in terms of just like where the cast is. It's like, yeah, there were some disjointed moments because like not everyone it's not like one giant friend group it's different friend groups that have been sort of pieced together and I don't mind that but I under but I feel like moving I'm, I'm wondering if you feel the same which is like moving forward I wish that like we can find the right balance of spending enough time with each of you and w without adding too many people but adding I don't know it's a, it's a really tough balance but it's uh at some points in the season it worked and some points I feel like there was there's some improvement to be made no, we, I mean, we thought the same thing. So, you know, as the audience is saying it, we're saying it and we all were like, wait, that's not how I remembered it. Or that's mm -hmm. not, that's not what our reality was at mm -hmm. that time, but it's so hard to convey. And I think they probably realized, you know, once they started editing, like, oh shit, there's too many people, there's too many things committed and this is going to be really difficult. So, I mean, I got to hand it to them. They've still made a show out of it. Yeah. Um, I can't imagine how hard it would be, but yeah. 
it, I'm interested to see kind of what changes are made, you know, if yeah. there's a season or things right. like that. Or yeah. And it sounds like the reunion does a lot of like ex- explaining, which is really great. Um, Naomi, yeah. I'm, I'm, Naomi, I'm curious for you, like, you know, now that you are at the tail end of this return season, what, what was the biggest difference in terms of your, in terms of your expectation? Because like you've, you've been, you've been here, people recognize you. We know, we know your story. Did you, did it, and it must've been di- different in some capacity for you. Um, what, what was the biggest kind of like learning curve or difference for you? Oh, I think the biggest difference, which was actually a blessing and a curse is that I didn't have to worry about what someone else was thinking because, you know, when I was dating the tool and stuff and filming, it's kind of hard because he didn't, didn't want to film and didn't want to be on the show, but did want a blue check mark and all this stuff. And so it was very confusing and rightfully so, but um, (laughs) and it's like, I don't have to worry about what someone is thinking. You know, I, I just was myself. I did my own thing. I don't regret anything. I'm not embarrassed about anything. I just did it. And that's that, you know? And mm-hmm. so um, it was like very freeing. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. And then Leva for you, I think, I mean, I think about in the Housewives universe, a second season, a lot of the time is like, you know what the audience thinks. You, 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 you have that first experience under your belt and you have that probably in the back of your mind. Like, okay, this is what we were thought in the first time. How do I adjust? Was that right. at all part of your approach to filming this season? Like, how did you approach your second go around? That's, a lot of people ask me that. And I feel like last year, you know, we filmed less time. There was like yeah. five of us, you know, now this, this year, there's like, what, how many of us? Like 11 or something. There's like a huge amount of us. So of course, like certain conversations were a little bit more repeated and, um, but I really, that I am exactly the same person I was last year that I am this year, like I agree. without, yeah. um, I'm really not, I, I have no problem with confrontation. Don't get me wrong ever. Um, but I just really didn't have too many bones to pick, you know, like, um, and I think when I did pick a bone, it was like, oh, okay, I get this or I get that. And then, you know, there were certain things that I was just like sick of, which is why you see me sort of peace out at all the rest and. Mm. not on a group trip because I was just like these are outside of my boundaries of mental health <laughs> what is that you just doing four hours of my happy time yeah <laughs> because like as a mom like I am trying like if I'm leaving my husband and, and child like I want it to be happy time and if you're like ruining the four hours I have to just like my you know, happy time it's my happy time it's like right my, you really you know I don't want to go home like crying or upset or drained like so, and so I guess like, I'm curious for you though, Leva, cause it's like to play devil's advocate, like you are on a ensemble show where like you're expected to go on the trips and whatnot. And I, I'm just wondering like, what's the balance there? You know what I mean? Because like it, part of the gig, yeah, I guess I'm is sad, like, sure. is being in these scenarios where it's like, oh my God, these like crazy people are all fighting, but it's like, you know what yeah. I mean? I mean, the nitty gritty of it is really that I felt like Craig was being um, out of pocket with Naomi. That's what it boils down to. And Naomi yeah. can have her own opinion of that. But I felt like it was just too much. And it was like, I know that innately, if tables were turned, because she's she has no problem being confrontation, confrontational either, like right. at all. <laughs> it's just she delivers it a little differently than I do. Like, you know, I aspire to like deliver it. With <laughs> you know, but seriously, too much but you I'm are, like, you're always I'm like, so good about it. I'm just like, ah! <laughs> but yeah, in I knew just with the culmination of like everything going on and Craig sort of not maybe admitting that he was stressed out or had to deal with a lot and it was coming out sideways. I knew innately there was going to be fights. I was going to protect either like Taylor or, you know, Naomi, not protect, but just, you know, as a girl, it's like girl code. Like, yeah, when for sure. girl, it's like you know, you, she doesn't want to engage. She doesn't want to do that anymore. And then it'd be me being like, stop doing that. And then it would get turned on me. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to deal with that, mm-hmm. you know? And I yeah. think you'll see some of that in the finale where, you know, I'm thinking, oh, we're going to like a corporate yeah. event. Nothing's going to happen. But, you oh, know, I know, inevitably, if, if it's, if Naomi's not going to engage, that rage turns to somebody else. And I didn't want to be the receiver of that. And yeah. I'm not, you know, I'm just, I have boundaries. Like if my husband isn't speaking to me that way, another person can't. 
That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I, that, that makes want, I don't want women to see that. It's not acceptable. Yeah. I totally, I totally get that. Um, and that makes a lot of sense. Um, and then Naomi, like, I, 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 I wonder if for you, like you, you came into this and you're like, you, you must've known that you had, you were going to have to talk about the Craig of it all and sort of, you know, hash it out with him or whatever. And it probably <laughs> with his reactions in various scenarios, I'm sure that like it maybe lasted longer than you thought it went or, or what was going to go or didn't go necessarily as you thought it would. And, um, do you, do you hope that this season is sort of like the last time that you're going to have to like really hammer that home and talk about that? And then we can kind of move on to, to different. So. It's like, ugh, it was so dragged out. Yeah. Um, I mean, I thought, you know, I wouldn't have gone into the season because Greg was the first person that I asked about coming back and he was super supportive. So I would have never done it had I thought that there was any type of problem there. And I was really, really surprised that this is something that kept happening over and over and over again. And it was to the point where I was like, all right, you know, you're, I mean, even before St. Simon's, I was like, mm -hmm. are you going to be upset if I'm on this trip? And he's like, no, of course not. Like, it's all good. Yeah. Come. And I'm like, okay, I come. Freaks out on me two nights in a row. Then, you know, and every yeah. time before that, it was like, okay, are you going to be upset if? And he's like, no. Yeah, it was a lot of, I mean, the, the three of us were like in cahoots. Like me and Craig wanted her back you know, like bring her back, bring her back. They were so chill and cool. And then it, she was jarred. I was jarred. I was like, what's happening? And I think it would have boiled down to is like, he wanted to respect Paige's wishes that she, he keeps like a major distance with Naomi, but I think he couldn't communicate that to Naomi because he was so hard on her when she was respecting the tools wishes. Mm -hmm. And he thought that that was a sign of him being a dud when essentially anyone has the right to say, I don't want that. Paige has a right to say that, but I think he is, he just didn't want to communicate that to you because then it would make him look, you know, a certain type of way. And, you know, it was just it's a lack of communication. I think mm -hmm. that came out just like sideways, sideways and her and I were it's, like, but it's all, it's also like an unrealistic, it's an, un <laughs> it's, I, I get, I get like, I get honor wanting to honor that. And I understand her wanting that, but it's also unrealistic because they're now back on a show together with 10 people and going on trips together. So it's, Right. Exactly. Right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Like I'm. Yeah. And I felt bad for her. She's like, I'm not trying to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> so you know the the part you can't say the fourth wall stuff is like, come on, you know. Like right. when I saw news about us going to copy, he's like, why would she call me for copy? I'm like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Like, why would I call? Yeah, because and I was like, you should get caught with Greg. Yeah, but probably not allowed to say that. But so can you imagine as her friend, I was like pissed yeah. every time I would. And people are like, oh, why are you telling Naomi he called you that? Because I was like, to Naomi's face, you're so nice. And then you turn around and act like she's like obsessed with you. And she's not. She's like dating four other dudes. And you just told me. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Well, no, whatever. I'm just saying. No, no, not four other dudes. I'm just saying she's dating. That's the tea. Like, she's, she's not dating four other dudes. That's true. But anyway, no. What I meant is she's dating. Like, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. She, you know, like, you are old news. She even has others that are benched. But like, anyway, the point is like, the girl's dating. She's not into you. Even mm -hmm. post Whitney, he was just like, she's not. And I'm like, it's not. It's, this is not a thing. And so, I felt I was like, she was more graceful about it, but I was just like, like, if you could, if I had steam coming out of my ears and we were a cartoon, I love steam you so would be much. like coming out of my ears. Mm. And the part where he was saying that about Naomi, um, where he was like, oh, she's like psycho or crazy. I don't know what he said, but I, I also probably that with, I would, if Naomi was speaking about you that way, I would also say like, Naomi, mm. you know, yeah. with, it's all right. Don't get to, you know, but with him, it would get it was like, we're already on trigger Island. So there's no mm -hmm. like back, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. And I'm wondering for both of you, like, cause now Southern charm exists in the Southern charm universe. But then there's also crossover with these other Bravo shows. And do you pay attention at all to the conversations around those with, with the, with the guys from Southern charm that are, that, that appear on those, because it like with Austin in particular, like those shows didn't do oh, any favors. Shows are Oh, okay. Like, I, like, 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 like those those don't do Austin any favors in terms of how the public like views him. I just heard him. called the hump civic of men, and 
And because I, I don't know, you watch it, Winter House and Summer House? I don't watch it, but I, I did either. hear that, so, like, or saw it on an Instagram thing. Or I saw and then so I, like, many memes about, about it. it. <laughs> yeah, so we, I think we see, like, we'll get tagged in random peripheral things, and that's yeah, kind of yeah. how we talk these things out. But I don't think that anyone that's actually on a Bravo show really watches Bravo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. General, I watch Housewives. But I don't watch um Summer But it's, House, that's so. that's separate from your for your guys' yeah, situation. Yeah, like exactly. Summer, I, just, you know, <laughs> I, I don't I, I like I mean I, I don't watch the other the, the other ones, like the other ones. Mm-hmm. And Leva, obviously in the finale, you and Craig have a big blow up. There, there's a big moment that happens. And you know, it, it was interesting because after you guys film that, there's all those accounts that track like who follows who and whatnot. And like there was this all these people saw that people had unfollowed you on from the cast on Instagram. And yeah. I'm sure you saw those, those posts that had called that out, but there was yeah. so much speculation about what went down. I, I blocked that. Yeah. They didn't unfollow her. She blocked oh, them. Oh, oh, you, oh, you blocked them. Oh, okay. So that, that, that helps explain part of it because there was so much speculation about what went down. You know what I mean? And yeah, it was I'm, like within hours of the finale that I, and I texted her. Um, Done with all, I'm so lucky. Done. <laughs> she has. She, she. I have to take her to the grave because she has all the goods. Um. But yeah, I was, I was. I was really tired, and and you know, it, at the end of the finale, it boiled down to, it. Like I said, it was just like a culmination of me just getting tired of Craig, and and I have my own relationship, obviously, with his partners. I mean, they're, um, they're on my street. I've been there for yeah sort of a decade, you know, like when they came in, I helped them shop leases and like, you know, anything they need with the city. Like we're very friendly. I helped Craig do like a pillow line, like everything. So I have my own relationship with them. And I think Paige being like an outsider, you know, kind of being like, oh, you're talking to his team. And I'm like, are we 12? Like what I know his team, like, you know, we're on. Yeah. So to me, it was, uh, she had no context, you know, I wasn't trying to be shady but she didn't have context of what was happening. Um, and I think Craig just immediately got triggered because of that and other things that happened throughout the evening. And I unfollowed specifically, it was Catherine, Madison, Vanita, Catherine, Madison, Vanita, Craig Austin, Craig Austin, Catherine, Paige. Was no. and, and Paige, because the girls, when Craig was sort of like, going at it, the girls sort of piled on. And to me, that was just, I had no respect for them for doing that. You know what I mean? Cause I've been gracious to really all of them. And then, um, Austin, we were friends and I expected Austin to sort of like, if there's anyone to wrangle him in, it would have been his partner, Jerry or Austin. And that's the conversation I was having with Jerry. I was like, I'm worried mm-hmm. about, I don't, what's going on. It really was from a place of love. Like I was like, I don't know don't know what to do. Like, please have him stop yelling at me because I know myself, anyone who knows me well, she can say like, you have to stop poking the bear, you know? Mm-hmm. So. What people don't know, and this is what's so hard about reality shows and, you know, what's caught on camera, what's shown on these shows. It, there are a lot of dynamics that happen off camera. So for example, for years, like I met Leva eight years ago or something, and I don't know. And when I met, she, she was already helping Craig then try to do something with himself and like hooking him up with things and doing deals with him and helping him tag along with things. And so, and Craig was like, sort of gave her credit for, but not really. And so it's kind of a pile on of things that so many people don't know about because love is not going to go, you know, shout it from a mountaintop, but I know, and it's a lot of really generous things that she's done. So to be treated any type of way other than with full respect was like unacceptable. Yeah, completely. Like, yeah, and I feel and I feel like there's just a what what I think people don't realize is how far back Leva you go with everybody. You know what I mean? Because you yeah. you like and we talked about this in our I think our interview during your last season, which was like you've been around for filming, you've been around this cast a lot. You've if you weren't a cast member, but you've you're you're in this world yeah, very naturally. Season one, yeah, like I've been around them right. you know, in real life off camera. Yeah, exactly. So I think that, that, that's, that gets lost, I think, sometimes in the context of the show, yeah. I feel like. Yeah. Um, so it was I just to, like my mother. I was like, do you know how much I've done for you? Do you know how much yeah, I've loved? Totally. You, you know, and a little bit of my ego. So Yeah. Um, I want to end with a couple quick questions, just random things that I, that I was wondering about. Um, Leva, status of the spinoff, because I'm really excited about that. The, the, well, what's, what's going on there? 
Um, so I'm not permitted to speak too much on it. Okay. Um, but it's, I think you guys are going to love it. It's, it's super exciting. It's just a different side of Charleston that you guys have not seen. Um, and it's sort of a younger, more coastal, like I almost feel like it's like Laguna beach meets meets, you know, the Hills meets, you know, it's like, it's younger. Um, and, and the cast is just, I love They're them. So cute. They drive me They're crazy, so but I love them. But they <laughs> crazy. Um, and I think you guys will, will have a good time and hopefully it'll, you'll see it soon. Mm-hmm. Where Naomi, where do you stand with Whitney right now? What's going on? We're still great friends. Good. I mean, um, I think that again, the Whitney thing was like kind of blown up on the show, right? Because it's a show, but um, it was really important to us that it doesn't, ruin our friendship doesn't affect yeah. our friendship whatsoever we're still like you know great with each other and yeah nothing but respect for Whitney. good good um what fans noticed that Catherine and Madison weren't really around for a lot of the second half of the season they weren't in a lot of the group scenes or whatever is there an explanation for that or were they just not or I mean is, is there like a reason for that or does, is that just kind of how the the, the cards fell well, um, production allowed us to sort of like invite who we wanted to at events. It wasn't like you weren't forced to go to anything, you know, mm-hmm. it was really very authentic. And so I think, you know, Madison may have had, you know, her connection to the group was really with Austin. And so there was that. And then I think Catherine was going through a breakup and then she wasn't in the best place, I think, with maybe all the girls. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Just sort of. I mean, I think like I would have invited Madison to any events like I had. Yeah, I mean, she was at your party. Yeah. And yeah, I, it, it she just, would have been at mine, but we got a little off camera tiff. <laughs> yeah, and I, I mean, I think Catherine's just not that close with yeah those people. So mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. That's what, um, what about you guys? I'm, I'm maybe this will come up for the reunion, but you guys and Vanita, is that is there is there hope for you guys in the future, or is that? friendship maybe not happening not for me I mean, I'll, I'll be cordial uh, I'm, I'll always be cordial I've always been cordial but I don't think that the viewer I think the viewer thinks my situation was based on a text message and they think her situation was just based in that one moment but there's so much more context to that which I'm hoping that they will you mm-hmm. guys will see yeah so, oh. um th- 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 this one is not meant to be shady I promise but like I feel like <laughs> Mar- the addition of Marcy to the cast felt a little bit random with just like, well, you like did, 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 it, did it feel random to you guys in, in the, in the filming process? No, Marcy's so great. Like she's yeah. so fun. She's so cool. She so seems nice. fun. Addition. She just got pregnant. Funny. Yeah, she, she got pregnant. pregnant. She was sober throughout the whole filming. Like yeah. It, yeah. it was that to me, you know what I mean? But she's awesome. Yeah. She really is. And she seems awesome. Time. She seems awesome. It just didn't totally gel. I feel like in the in the season, it just well, didn't fully. Marcy was closer <laughs> with the guys. Like, oh yeah, Marcy was closer with the guys. So that's okay. sort of what it was. And then Sorry. you know, then she got engaged and married. Okay. Yeah. So everything. Um. All right. So wrapping it up, we're running out of time. But you know, I'm hopeful for another season of Southern Charm. I hope both of you are on it. What do you hope it looks like? Like what? Again, we talked a little bit earlier about it being a little. There were moments, but there was some disjointedness. What do you each of you hope it hope that the next season of Southern Charm could look like? I hope that we get a more cohesive group if, mm-hmm. you know, and whether that means we're a part of it or not. Like yeah. hope, we have no idea what's gonna happen. We yeah. haven't even heard of a new season yet or anything. So I hope it's more cohesive group and I think it will translate better. Yeah. And and when it's more cohesive, then we can talk about all our stuff, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Be more open our real personal stuff but when it feels disjointed it's like I don't trust these two people so I can't really <laughs> pour my heart out right now you know yeah I get it we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> um all right well thank you so much for taking the time you're very generous with your time enjoy JBL Fest thank enjoy you. Doja Cat enjoy BB Rexa let off some steam from this season it was great to talk yes. to you guys and I'll see you at BravoCon I'll see you at BravoCon yeah. oh yeah yeah okay <laughs> all right awesome. bye guys Thanks for tuning in to We Should Talk. I hope you enjoyed the interview. You can find out more about In The Know at inthenow.com. You can follow me, Gibson Johns, at Gibsonoma on Twitter and Instagram. And you can listen to all of our interviews, past and future, by searching We Should Talk wherever you get your podcasts. Hope to see you next time.